Hello everyone. Welcome to our first episode of podcast The Untold Hypothesis brought to us by Department of Life Sciences. Today we are having our first chief guest Mr Suraj Madhavan. So can you introduce yourself? Thank you so much. I'm Suraj Madhavan. Um I'm a co-founder um and chief operating officer of Innovative Global Solutions at uh, uh, Maharashtra Thane that's where the company is registered and I work from Bangalore. Okay. I have almost two decades of experience in clinical research. I'm a postgraduate in uh, uh, pharmacy clinical pharmacy um passed out from Manipal. Okay. And uh, had a good amount of experience with pharma and clinical research organization throughout my journey and then I think somewhere in 2018 I felt that I need to take up something more challenging and that's how I entered into an entrepreneurial journey and it's been 7 years since this company has been formed it has been a wonderful journey so far a lot of learning on an everyday basis yes sir that's that's how it has been so did you ever think that you will be an entrepreneur a big person in the society or oh, never never i mean um, at least uh, you know uh, i'm a first generation entrepreneur i come from a very humble background of an agriculture i never thought i would uh, be an entrepreneur there has been certain spurts of the interest of starting something on my own i uh, certain trainings certain management trainings did give me uh, you know that vibes that this could be interesting but i never imagined i would be so i am more like an accidental entrepreneur i can say mm-hmm. and um, never ever i never considered this as a position uh, as a large position it's a position of responsibility because you have a team to manage so i'm happy i mean whatever chances i got i'm pretty happy with it so how is life now after being an entrepreneur like that too from the department of life sciences you are you are based from clinical research so how does that feel um it's a mix of emotions i mean you know it's unpredictable it's like a tide um which goes up certain days it comes down certain days it's absolutely unpredictable uh, where certain decisions are very difficult to be taken has to be taken sometimes things are not in your control you probably let go or you probably plan better mm, so i would say i really don't know what would happen the next day as an unexpected one coming in so it's it's very interesting i mean it will keep your adrenaline on the top always yeah. that's what i believe my life is currently so when you were a student what was the difficult challenges you have faced okay. interesting question so as a student you know i did um say so yeah, if i talk about my graduation day graduation days i took b farm um it was again not from a planned way of that i wanted to be a pharmacist i missed out be uh, taking medicine and um, there was a friend of mine who said there is a course called b farm which enables you to study something related to medicine and that allowed me to get into it um and that's how i entered but i realized i was not great with chemistry so i had to fight chemistry throughout the four years of b farm because b farm has more of chemistry and that one few subjects which really uh, kept me on was uh, the study of human body so physiology uh, pathophysiology and pharmacology these were three subjects that kept me on and made me interested that i should continue studying on that however i was not very clear at the end of b farm that what next other than doing masters i did have a plan uh, because i come from an agriculture background i did think of uh doing something with medicinal plants because there was a subject called pharmacognosy yes, which talks about extraction of volatile oils some medicines being extracted i was thrilled with that i did pursue a little bit of inquiry but my father said that you know you need a post graduation think of it after that yeah. and but after that 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 particular uh, interest did subside a little bit because i got exposed to the clinical research industry okay. and from there it had moved on um so clarity is something which i didn't have much as a graduate and that's what my intent for the students okay. are these days that you know you need to proactively start getting clarity it's because that would help them to shape their future in much better way rather facing five or 10 years then realizing what next to do so it's it's better in your graduation days itself you start asking that what is that you need okay that would be good i never got a chance to ask myself because i was enjoying those okay. graduation day with friends and so on aim was to pass get good marks 
and then see later when it comes. Okay. You know, that's how the typical mentality goes. But now I think world is going very fast. Yes. So this is what that aim should be. Okay. Uh, pretty much. So post graduation is where I started really getting an idea that okay, industry is something which we can get into. And that's how I got into clinical research industry and spent almost 15 years working and then last seven years into entrepreneur journey there. So how like how is your how was your college life? It was it was good. I mean, um, I did I did pass out from Manipal. Yeah. And Manipal is one of the esteemed universities uh, that we worked in. The uh, cultural way there were a lot of exposure. The teachers were great. We did have a lot of exposure to through the academic and non-academic also fun etc. Was there so it it was pretty good. I mean, I cherish my uh, days spending during my graduation and post-graduation coming there. So have you, you were, like, did you ever take part in co-curricular things or uh, fest like bio or? Uh, so, I mean, we, we had a lot of, um, um, you know, annual day functions coming right. in. So until my B-form days, I was not much into all this. I used to be an audience clapping for my friends. Okay. But then in M-form, I got into certain set of people who are very active into this. So I did participate in dance and uh, certain activities. That's very which, interesting. Which was, huh, so I could be on the stage. I could be on the stage and that gave me a different opportunity there. So from there on, I've been active uh, thanks to, you know, my uh, class friend then, wife now, who pulled me into the stage getting into this co-curricular activities. Oh, okay. So do, while you, when, you were, you, when you were studying, uh, have you ever thought you will be uh, creating your own company, having your own, having your own people? Um, no, no, not really, not really. I, I probably I wanted to be a faculty after M farm. I always wanted to be a faculty and uh, parallelly take care of my agricultural, uh, you know, land. That was the aim which was going around. But you know, fate, destiny, as it is, I got exposed to the industrial taste and then moved on. But I never thought. I would be owning a company and uh, uh, having people work along with me. Uh, I never use the word under me because, you know, it's, it's always collaboration. So whoever is there, we, I always tell that people work with me, I work with them. That's how I tend to use. So I never thought that would happen. But I think um, over a bit of one and a half decades, the interest of doing something different because I was not getting that vibe or uh, adrenaline rush in spite of becoming a good position later in an employee and that's what forced me so message is you will get your signals when you feel that i mean you have to be in an uncomfortable zone only then you can start something on your own when you're in a comfort zone you will never even think of starting on your own because you're happy with your yes. regular one so the moment you are uncomfortable that's when you know, so necessity, the mother of all invention. So the necessity of going back into comfort or the necessity of going back into that happy mode forced me to take this opportunity of starting something on my own, which kept me busy. Until uh, then, you know, I was very clear nine to five. And this is what it, anything more than that, I used to get burnt out, etc. But I think last seven years, I have never probably had weekends because I was still working on, I've been continuously connecting with people, talking to people, never get bo got bored or felt stressed out. Because that's the passion inside that comes in. So some the message out is, you should always try to do what you're interested in. Yes. It will keep you on. It will never bring us a stress. It will be all the more adding more energy to you. So that's the message which I would like to you know give out to the younger uh, generation now. So now we all are, like most of the third years, we are very confused in our life. Like what to do next? What to pursue? Should we go for a job? Should we take a MSc? Uh, like we are so confused with the things. So what would you suggest us, sir? Like getting a job is better or taking a master's is better? Uh, that's a, that's a, you know, very tricky question. Um, earlier, I think the, the scenario I used to be telling that go ahead with the master's and take the job later on. But I think given the scenario now, there are a lot, the opportunities have amplified. Initially, it was like very few sectors were there. You had probably science, you had arts, you had uh, commerce. And then you had certain areas within that. Now, there are a lot of integrated opportunities coming in. So I would probably say after graduation, try for um, 
employment if not an employment at least try interning somewhere no you don't need to get employed somewhere because getting employment is also a challenge in these days every company has its you know limitations of hiring minimum people so try getting an intern and turning uh, into some companies of the choice which you have don't just intern anywhere you want to try as much as possible the area which you're looking into okay. once you get a chance for interning understand which in that area is really your area sometimes you might feel that you're doing extremely good you need not think of a masters immediately yeah go ahead with it but sometimes you might feel that okay this is good but i think i need to learn a little bit more try taking a masters around that area okay. that would allow you to come in and the only reason i didn't pursue my phd after mfarm was i felt it it the current job which i was into is more of operational mm. it's more into operations uh, which was really requiring more of common sense and logic approach and didn't didn't high degree didn't matter there so i didn't do it for the sake of doing okay. i will do definitely do my uh, phd when that is a purposeful one which needs to add a value back i mean that's where i would say your your all your education should be applicational in nature rather just being a degree to be carried and it should not be a certificate it mm. should be an application one mm. so probably you after your graduation move on try something as an intern if not an intern try if you getting an employment go ahead take it okay. a year or two okay and then decide what next what? that will give you a larger insight okay. um there will there is another school of thought saying that you lose two years etc but i think end of the day it doesn't matter two years down the line it doesn't matter you still have almost 30 to 40 years in your life to continue and if you given an opportunity for doing something on your own try it go ahead never mind you fail fail early in your life that's the message fail fail early get up and then fight it out again that's how you can that's what success is getting up from failure is a success that's mm -hmm. what i would consider that as it was so good sir so now you are having your own company what do you look in your employ employees like as everybody tells cgpa is so important skills are very important so we student i'm really confused okay should we concentrate on cgpa should we concentrate on skills and that to what what type of skills we have to get into so we are very confused about it so i mean you know the days when i used to interview people these days what i've done my team is there they manage i don't get into because the reason is if you have to empower people you have to let go certain things so i only come in pitches where the person to be taken is very senior i would after one or two rounds of screening but initial days when i used to screen i used to look at the aspiration of the person to come in how hungry is the person to learn how hungry is the person to learn so you know are you ready to surrender yourself surrendering means not being a slave but surrendering in that thing i'm ready to learn give me an opportunity give me any damn thing i will come out learn it and then take it as an opportunity so i have an example of a person uh, he's right now finished his masters in us and uh, he is a farm day student and uh, i took an interview of his and um, asked a couple of questions and then he had questions to me saying that i see you opened office in india you have an office in us you have an office in malaysia what's your plan out here so he asked me a question and that that gave me a vibe saying that he's done his homework and he's even trying to see what my vision is which okay. nobody had asked by then okay. gave him an opportunity it was a very ground level opportunity he took but within 6 months he proved himself he got promoted to the next level hmm. and again then he said he is getting a chance to do masters in us i asked him saying that what's the purpose he said he wants to settle down in us that was his aim and uh, i was happy because his vision is very clear he wants to settle down in us contribute uh, for that area that is what his interest is so then i allowed him we gave him a good letter of recommendation and today he is working in one of the startups in us and we are still in touch i am a very uh, i feel very proud that i got a chance to work along with him his vision was different so always show that you're you keep yourself hungry you know that's more important marks could be one area there are, there are people who would look for marks i never looked into the marks per se because i personally believe that marks is one aspect but the other aspect is also skill set you know not every skill set you will develop during your college time mm -hmm. if there are certain areas so you need to wait for those even one opportunity of 
small interning, small during your graduation itself, if you get a chance to publish a paper, mm. you know these are areas which show that you are research oriented. You are ready to do. You are ready to slog. Because during graduation, most of them tend to enjoy life. I also have enjoyed not done much of. I re, I do repent that I could have contributed a lot for manuscript writing and developing papers, etc. So these are certain cues which you can try to do. Even say participating in functions like bio or contributing, arranging it. These are your leadership skills which will come in there. How did you handle? Which were the sections you did? Bring it out, saying that what were the challenges you faced, where you failed. Okay. Don't hesitate to uh, shout out your failure. Because once you accept it, you have failed somewhere. How did you recover from it? That's also important. That's what will allow me saying that okay, this person is okay failure. So even when my team they fail, I do mention to them saying that fine, that's another learning today. Okay. It's a learning. As far as it is not being repeated again, I I should be absolutely okay because I also learned through them that this is a p- potential way of learning. Let me improve my process so that I don't fail. So you know, encouraging failure mm-hmm. is another way of. gaining experience <laughs> so what one last advice you would have you would give for this generation kids patience is definitely what i would advise because we are in the days of blankets and insta marts where everything is made available to you in no time uh we get all those you ask your parents something you get it within you know some period of time yes uh but then life is not always fair life is never fair you have your own uh, you know challenges barriers coming in so be ready to face it and once you're out of your uh, educational one and you get into an employment or into your entrepreneur one you'll realize that things don't come that easy initial one may be luck but later on it's more of perseverance keep looking out for your strengths keep looking out for your weaknesses so if your weaknesses are workable start working on it if not then try as much as your strengths to overcome amplify your strengths as much as possible and start keeping keeping collaborating with like minded people and how do you find like minded people it may not be possible with the first interaction second interaction but couple of interactions that's the instinct you have to develop saying that how do i how do i find out my like minded people um always work with smarter people always try to associate with people smarter than you don't get into a room where you are the only smartest person you have to have people smarter than you who keep challenging you where you will always be forced to perform and reach that level that will always keep you you know um, more learned more humble and being with this with the humility you can really come up and uh, go to a level of your choice you need not be a millionaire you need not be you know uh, crorepati to be there but even if you are able to take care of your expenses day to day expenses and manage a life that's still good enough i mean as an entrepreneur i would still say that's that's pretty good to be i do not use the word success because these are situational you know there are there but are you able to survive are you able to fight it out that is what you need to look into yes sir it was really a special moment for me to have a talk with you i have gained a lot of informations through you thank you sir thank you for being here with us today thank you so much it's it's really an honor to be part of this uh, bio or 2025 and the institute um i mean i am uh, amazed at the infrastructure of christu jayanti you know university and a deemed to be university now i wish uh, the university all the best and may they have many, many more accolades yes. coming in i would be happy to be associated with this university and um giving my bit to the young, next generation of this uh, students whom they are grooming uh, let many of them turn out to be entrepreneurs let many of them turn out to be uh, the next generation of uh, you know employees supporting these startups making this country a much much larger country yes, that's, sir. that's it thank you thank sir you.